Mark Wilson, these results appear good. How good? Hello, John. It's good to be with you again. The results are a satisfactory set of results. And if you have a look at it, there's a few things that are true. It's true that all the key metrics are going in the right direction. It's true that the businesses are gaining traction, that the turnaround momentum continues. But it's also true that we still have quite a few issues, so we remain a turnaround. Until that happens, you won't see me smiling. Quantify that for me in terms of numbers. Well, there's a few key numbers to look at. So the NAV's up 7%. EPS which is really a reflection of the profitability of the business, that's up 16%. Of course, you have the dividend up, you have expenses down. So you've got debt leverage down, expenses down, operating profit up. That's just good business. OK, we'll come to some of these numbers in a bit. But it is worth saying that you have faced considerable headwinds over the past six months. Mm, we have, haven't we? We've had weather, we've had some regulatory changes, but, you know, when you have weather, that's what you're there to do. You're there to look after customers. As a business with this sort of diversity, you don't rely on any one business or any one geography. And so these sort of changes you've got to take in your stride. And I think we've done that pretty well. Uh, you've had, had the business been pretty robust over some headwinds. And I don't like making excuses. We're there to manage through good times and bad times, through headwinds and no headwinds. It's about the result that counts. And we've got those. Let's just talk about costs. I think you set a target of reducing the cost by 400 million. Uh, you seem to be heading for 568 million. You haven't done the old politician's trick, have you, where you set the bar at that level and then you go leaping over it and you say, look how well I've done. John, that's not really how I'd characterise it. What I would say is this. To be clear, we said we get expenses down below 50%. Now, it's true that after six months of the three-year target, we're halfway there from 52 after being 54 previously. So clearly we've made some very good progress and it's faster than we thought. But what I did say was below 50. And how much below? Well, I think that remains to be seen. We will get it below, we'll continue to work on it, but at this stage you're not going to reset the target. The other thing I should mention on this, of course, is the restructuring costs. Now they are down about 74% over the period that's real money that we can get up to the group. That's real money that in the end goes to shareholders. Let's look at some of the other metrics. The combined operating ratio, the core, I think you call it. The last time we met, we spoke a good deal about the floods that were hitting. Since when there have been more floods in Britain, you've also had the polar vortex in Canada. How has that hit the business? At the end of the day, we're here to pay out on claims when people need us, and that's what we've done. So the weather-related losses are higher. But if you have a look at the combined ratios, the cores, actually, they have improved. So if you have a look at the group, that's 95.5 uh, core. That's an improvement of about 0.7. That's significant. In the UK, we've had our best core despite the floods for seven years. That's 94.3. Now, why is that? So you've had bad weather more than offset by operational improvements. Expenses are down, underwriting's improved. We've just got better at our business. So despite those weather events, we've had better results. And let's just talk about uh, the life business and the major changes that have been made. Has that had a big impact? At the life business, you have had the headwinds, of course, uh, of the regulatory changes. Uh, but remember, Viva is a diversified group, so you don't rely on one business. And each business within the group has a different role. The UK life business, its role is to provide cash to the group. And it's doing that. And the cash it provided this year has increased, not decreased. After saying that, the new T reform has had an impact. Uh, and you've had value of new business, and that business is down. Now, that's partially offset by an increase in the value of new business from the protection business or from the equity release, or the fund inflows into our fund management platform, that had very strong inflows, over a billion pounds inflow. That makes it one of the strongest in the market. Was it a bad political decision that the government took over annuities, or was it a good decision which is just, you know, presenting challenges in how you implement and target products accordingly? Well, the decision certainly was a surprise. There's no doubting that. Uh, but it was a decision that we agree strategically with. 
I think giving consumers flexibility is a good thing, not a bad thing, and we need to adapt. Now, it also, I guess, provides a lot of opportunity for us. It provides opportunity for new products, and we've developed those. New ways of distribution, we're developing those as well. So we agree broadly with what the Chancellor did, and we're working to make it to our advantage, not detriment. So you say new products, like what? Like on Aviva Investors, we've got a new product called AIMS, Aviva Investors Multi-Strategies. It's a new range of products, it's an exciting range of products, and it aims to get target outcomes for consumers. So far, so good, and we have more to come. You have a thesis which is, which is cash flow plus growth, and that's something you have flagged as a priority. Um, how is it going? Are you winning? Well, uh, I don't know what the definition of winning is. I think that's a very long time before we'll ever declare victory. But we are certainly focusing on cash flow and growth. So what you've seen in the first uh, half, you've seen cash flow up 7%. That, of course, is not the, the full story because most of the businesses actually remit cash flow to the group in the second half. So we'll have to wait till the second half to see how well we've really done. But you've seen we've done that. We've put the dividend up as well. So it's positive, good progress, but too early to judge the full year result. Can we talk a bit about leverage? Uh, concern has been expressed by your shareholders that too much cash was being used to reduce debt. One, were they right to be concerned? And secondly, what is the current position with regards to that debt? Well, the debt, we said we have a target over the medium term of getting the debt versus the tangible bulk down below 40 and on an S&P basis below 30. In the first half of the year, it probably surprised a few, we have had progress. We're now down to 46% on a tangible book basis and we're down to 30% on an S&P basis. That's broadly within a double A range. Now, how has that happened? Many commentators suggested we couldn't do that without taking substantial cash. Now, clearly, the main factor, what we've done is we've increased the, the book. And as you increase the book, the ratio of debt obviously comes down. And that's been very helpful. Uh, we also paid off 240 million of a very expensive hybrid debt over that period. Uh, the result is a good reduction in that debt level over that time. And I was reading about a recent investor day that you hosted where you talked about digital first and true customer composite. Um, great slogans, what do they mean? Actually, John, I'm not a big fan of slogans. I'm a supporter of clear, concise strategy, and I think we have that. It's in two parts. We have the cash flow plus growth that you spoke about. Then we have something we call the strategic anchor, and that has three elements to it. First is customer composite, and it's a key differentiating competitive advantage we have. So we want to be able to provide in many markets health insurance, life insurance, general insurance, asset management, and we want to provide them to those customers in a simple way across whatever channels they want. The second part of the strategy is digital first. Where we're spending investment dollars, I want to invest them in digital. I want to be leading in digital. We want to make it a simple experience. We want to do it for all of our channels and brokers and partners, but digital first is that strategy. And the last part is not everywhere. We only want to be in markets and businesses where we can make a difference, where we can have scale, where we have a defined, distinct competitive advantage. I don't want to plant flags around the world, so therefore we're not going to be everywhere. There's been a lot in the press recently about Aviva kind of trying to challenge the so-called, I don't know, the whiplash culture, this rise almost exponentially in the number of people claiming for whiplash injuries. What's all that about? Well, John, this is very much a UK-specific issue, and it is a problem. If you have a look at whiplash in the UK, the incidence of whiplash is around three times higher than the rest of Europe. Now, I don't believe that British necks are three times weaker than others in the world. I just don't believe that. So the only conclusion you can come to is that there is a lot of fraud involved. I don't believe our consumers in the UK or our customers should be paying for fraud. We believe in care, not cash. What does that mean? Well, we believe that we should be paying for rehabilitation of those whiplash, the genuine whiplash people, and not paying lump sums for cash of people that maybe don't need it. Secondly, we believe that all referral fees should be banned. If that happened, we believe that 
motor insurance premiums would come down in the UK by 15%. Now that is around 50 pounds. That's 50 pounds per consumer. I think that's worth it. Is this just an industry problem or is it a political problem too that government needs to tackle? Because it, in recent days it does look like the government is getting interested in this. Well, I think it's incumbent on all of us to do it. I think it's incumbent on us. We certainly have a role to play. The government has a role to play because regulation would have to change to facilitate that. But the size of the prize for the consumer is important and that makes good business. Now, the last time we spoke, we uh, discussed management changes here at Aviva and those have continued. Yeah, we have made a couple more and I'm getting pretty comfortable with where our team is at the moment. I think if you have a look at the team we have on the paddock, it stacks up well. Uh, Chris Way is the latest addition. He's got a fine pedigree as a top CEO of a very large listed entity. That's Great Eastern. And it's great to have Chris on board. But now we have some depth and some real intellectual grunt in that team, and I think that's very positive for it. But you know what? The team can all be very good on paper. The only thing that counts is the results we get, because that's how we're going to be judged. So let's do the kind of almost end of school year report where we ask the headmaster uh, to give his marks. What is the could do better? What's on your action list? Uh, I don't think I'm the headmaster, probably more the coach, uh, I think. So what are, we, what are we looking forward to to do? So I think cash flow is still important. We have a cash flow plus growth thesis. We have to deliver on that. We are delivering on that and the results today certainly show that. But we have much more to do in getting the remittances up from the business and the second part of the year in remittances is, is important. If you look at the growth part of the thesis, the growth over this period is pretty good. Uh, the growth businesses actually contributed around about 54%. That's substantial. If you translate that to the whole group, that's about 25% of the total VMB of the group. So that's certainly going in the right direction as well. But we've got much more to do. It is about investing in growth areas. It's about investing in digital. It's about investing in automation. It's about investing in new products and being innovative. And we're certainly doing that as well. And then I think the last focus for the next period of time remains on expense efficiency. Yes, I know the expense results are probably uh, surprising uh, to some people, but we have much more to go in that area. So final question. What do you want people to take away from these results? And how should they judge Aviva's future performance? Well, John, I think it's quite simple, really. There's a few takeaways. I think, firstly, that the momentum of the turnaround continues. All the key metrics are going in the right direction. We've got profit up, we've got debt down, we've got NAV up. It's all going in the right direction. That's the second thing. That there's still much more to do. Uh, I'm not satisfied with where we are. I think the results are not yet adequate when compared against our potential. And that's the lens that I look at it through. So that's that. Then lastly, going forward, I think it's more of the same. I think it's executing on our customer composite. I think it's getting more of the digital in place. I think it's improving the efficiency. I think it's getting the cash flow up to the group. And then it will be about dividends and getting returns to shareholders. If we do all that, we're making real progress. Mark Wilson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, John.